going to the phones. Bill Bender with us right now. Bill is columnist for Sporting News, writes college football, and is uh, right in the middle of Big Ten country in Columbus, Ohio. Bill, how you doing today? What's uh, what's the feeling around Columbus today? It's just got to be still a little bit bummed out, or really bummed out. Yeah, I mean, it was. I don't think it was a shock, but I mean, it's just this is the reality we're living in, where you had a uh, national championship caliber team that isn't going to play, and you know, I'm just kind of sorting the list out now that you got 76 schools that are going, 54 that aren't, and as a re- result, I mean, it's just a madly frustrating process for a lot of people here in Big Ten country right now being told that they won't have football. Well, does that mean that there's no football in the spring, too? Because I was I was impressed with the, the, the plan that I saw from Jeff Brom, the Purdue head coach. Looked like he's, it's about as detailed as it can possibly be. Looks like it's realistic. Uh, I don't know if it puts too much strain on the bodies, but it looks like it allows time for proper rest. What do you think about the plan he uh, came forth with, if it's realistic, and uh, other thoughts you'd have about the possibility of a of a of a legitimate spring season? Yeah, I wrote about that for us today. You know, between Brom and Ryan Day and Ference and some of the other voices in the Big Ten, they're at least thinking about it and they're starting to plan it out. Um, we'll see if that goes. I, I think it's an interesting proposition. I mean, obviously, to me, that number around twenty games seems you're doing twenty games in a calendar year. You're pushing it. But um, we'll see. Um, I think it's it's the best option they have right now. If they could play five or six games, it would make sense. Um, and try to do a Big Ten champ, you know, a pseudo Big Ten championship game out of it. You could save some money. I think a lot of people around here, myself included, unfortunately, would probably watch that over college basketball. Yeah, I saw where Brom said that you would have basketball Sundays and football on Saturdays. Uh, but still, it's you know it's tough to share the spotlight with another major college sport, and certainly with no football now, you know, people are going to be really thirsty for it in the springtime. What are a couple of major hurdles that you see um, through to, for, to to actually have the ability to put together a legitimate spring season? Is it the weather? Is it eligibility? Is it opt outs? What do you think are a couple of main obstacles that they'll have to figure out? I mean, just the just to find two seasons in one calendar year is the big one. You're not going to have some star power. Um, you know, guys like I don't see how Justin Fields would play in that or be motivated to play in that. I think cold weather, obviously up here, weather's a little bit different. Um, but, you know, November and March are about the same. You, you tell somebody that, it's, it's about it. I mean, where you run into some problems in February and January, you get drilled with snow and cold and, I think you're asking student athletes a lot to play in average temperatures where the lows can be in the teens. That's just my opinion. Speaking to Bill Bender here on halftime, Bill, what do you make of all the, the when the announcement got made? You saw all the players voice their disapproval. You saw some coaches voice it as well. Not necessarily from like teams leaving the conference because I don't think that's going to happen. So that's an easy one for to answer. But what about the players? Do you think maybe not necessarily here in the next? month two months but what do you think about probably three or four months from now what do you think the players mindset's going to be as far as playing in the big 10 or pac 12 versus maybe transferring to the sec and these other conferences that are as of right now hopefully going to be playing football this fall i think it'll hurt more in recruiting as opposed i I mean there's no point in transferring now i mean i I don't think you can i mean in in a lot of ways i mean you gotta there's a lot of safety issues with that in general with teams trying to bubble up and then you bring other guys in, try to bring them up to speed this close to the season. I think that's a tough sell. Um, but down the line, yeah, I mean, if the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12 play and the Pac-12 and the Big 10 don't, Big 10 will take it. the Big 10 in particular will take a hit in recruiting. I mean, teams like Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, they'll probably feel that. And that's the risk of the decision. Now, it could be a mute point, as I've been saying all along. That could be a mute point if um, – the other conferences cancel because then they'll be looking for a spring alternative. So it's a tough situation for everybody involved. It's been especially tough here in Big Ten country. And there was no win for whatever decision that they wanted to make. Do you think, in just your personal opinion, do you think they made the right decision by making the decision now versus, or 
versus maybe waiting a few weeks just to kind of see what would happen when kids return to campus? Or do you think, in your opinion, that that was the right time to make that kind of a decision? You know, I think I don't mind them canceling the season. That's fine. I think they could have waited, obviously. I think the time, first off, the Big Ten was right about conference only schedules. Everybody got all wrangled up about that. But that was the right call. Mm hmm. I think the SEC was right about where they put it on the calendar, though. Put it at the end of September, give you some wiggle room to work, and see what happens here with COVID over the next month and a half or so. Um, I also had a problem with how the Big Ten let it out. I mean, you allowed Michigan to get angry. Nebraska, that relationship's tense now. Uh, Ohio State, they were talking about wanting to play outside the Big Ten. They're not going to do that. None of those teams are going to do that. But um, and Penn State was angry. When you anger your four major brands and um, – you're a first-time commissioner. Kevin Warren's going to have some uh, some of that to do. But the fact that Ohio State and Nebraska kind of retreated a little bit, that suggests that I think he's got it under control. Last thing, and then I'll pitch it back over to Phil. We talked earlier in the show just kind of like what the college football playoff could look like, how it's going to get put together, different things like that. If they if these three co- remaining conferences are able to do the do a full season, to an extent, and then able to have a college football playoff and crown a quote-unquote national champion. Is that a legit national champion? Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, they did a couple years ago with Georgia, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Clemson. That was fine. I mean, they don't need the Pac-12 and the Big Ten for the playoff. Um, I'm sure some people will claim it's an asterisk and all that kind of stuff, but I don't think there's any asterisks given that we're in a pandemic. Things are different. I mean... Whoever wins, I watched a five overtime hockey game the other night with the Blue Jackets, and we're Blue Jackets fans, and I felt like a playoff loss no matter how you look at it. Um, so I don't think there's asterisks in any sport, according to, you know, just according to my opinion, I guess. I think mean, we can do it successfully. I wonder what, um, what you think. You, know, you guys, you spoke with Bill Hancock yesterday. I guess it was at a Zoom press conference where he was talking about. Uh, any sort of time frame. They've already pushed back, I think, the last poll that they're planning to release. Uh, but th- this all depends on whether or not the other three Power Five leagues play, uh, whether or not there will be a fall championship. Do you imagine any way possible that there would be a fall champion and a spring champion if you have a split season between the Power Five leagues? Yes. I mean, it's not impossible. I, I think it'd be dumb, kind of, but I mean, you know, if the Pac-12 and the Big Ten go in the spring and play six or seven games and do a championship game at the Rose Bowl, I would I would watch that. I would watch that over the Final Four in a heartbeat. And I think it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. Now, like I said, like, is that going to influence Justin Fields or Sean Wade or anybody to put off preparing for the NFL? I doubt it. Um, but you never know. I mean, Ohio State's sitting back there. That was a team that had a lot of talent. And, and of all the teams that have been hurt this week, Ohio State's been hurt the most. They had a national championship contender. They had a Heisman finalist last year, quarterback. Ryan Bake said it had a chance to be like one once-in-a-lifetime team. And you know, I know the commitment to that program is pretty good. So, you know, that, that's what they're missing. Like I said, I mean, I, you know, where it will hit most if the ACC and the SEC plays is right here in Columbus, Ohio, because they knew they were good enough to win it all. It is National International Left Handers Day, and I saw you uh, put a tweet out about it. So I'm guessing you're left-handed. Uh, is life any uh, more difficult for you being a left-hander? Uh, when what? I guess there's like what 90 percent of the population is right-handed. So what? What's life like for you as a lefty? Uh, you know, I coach a little bit of youth baseball. One of our assistants tried to put me at third one day when we were scrimmaging the kids <laughs> and just having fun. I was like, Yeah, we don't do third. We don't do third, we don't do short, we don't do second, we just play first. Um, and, uh, you know, golf, I haven't found a golf course made for a lefty yet. I always say that. But, um, you know, other than that, it, it, it's a good thing. I think, uh, you know, I, I, there's several left handed quarterbacks out there I love, and, and Vic and Steve Young would be two of them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I knew Young's the first lefty quarterback to go into the Hall of Fame. Is there another one that I'm missing? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's a rarity at that position, but, you know, it's always fun to watch. And, and those two in particular, I mean, they weren't just fun for throwing. They, they were pretty good runners, too.
Yeah, that's right. Well, of course, you got Tua. He's left-handed, and he's he should be a lot of fun to watch once the NFL season starts. You think the NFL is going to get through it because, you know, there's such a difference between professional and college sports and how they're dealing with this, but the NFL is not doing a bubble, so it seems the bubble structure is the way to do it. You think the NFL can make it through a season? Um, We'll see. I mean, I think they're going to push through for the money part, and they haven't had a lot of incidents yet. And I think, in general, that model with the Players Association, what, they, what they've been able to do with the bargaining and those kind of things, is that's a good model for college football in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, have a commissioner, have a Players Association, have a plan in place where safety protocols are, are put in so you can maybe play a season. And they're going to feel that in the Big Ten and Pac-12, like I said. But, yeah, I think the big, the, if, if it's safe to tackle and it's safe to play football, and they figure out a way to do it, I think the NFL will push through. Bill, appreciate your time, man. Thanks for jumping on today with us on short notice. Again, happy left-handed day, and uh, hopefully there will be some football to write about in the fall. Yeah, I hope so, too. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Take appreciate care. It. It. It's Bill Bender from Sporting News. Uh, we, both of our guests today have been left-handers. That's got to be a little odd. You know, that is I, weird. I thought this was supposed to be rare. Yeah, it's not so rare at all, in fact. Oh, uh, boy, what is rare is this show. We've got one more segment of it coming up. And we wrap the show up with halftime homework. I had a signed SmackDown drinking a root beer float last <laughs> week. And amazingly, he's the only person on earth who does not like the flavor of root beer float. So we'll see if he threw an ice cream soda down somehow and didn't upchuck it. And we'll see what else we're teaching him after the break. So stay tuned with the cherry on the top halftime homework.